Does the Bible say anything about current events? It certainly does. As Christians, we should have a biblical perspective of the news and be able to share that perspective with others. Welcome to today's news and biblical views. On this program, we try to be relevant with what's happening around the world, but also to be biblical. This is a program where we want to have a biblical perspective. In 1 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32, the Bible says the men of Issachar understood the times in which they lived, and they knew what Israel ought to do. We should understand the times in which we live and know what we ought to do as believers. Someone said we ought to have a newspaper in one hand and the Word of God in the other hand because so much of what is happening in the news today is fulfilling Bible prophecy. I will soon be going back to Israel for my sixth visit and when I'm over there we hear of prophecies and we see prophecies coming to pass as we see Jewish people from all over the world that are making Aliyah. They're coming back to their homeland and this is fulfilling prophecy. Today we're going to be looking at the subject of Push the Rock. This is a ministry that shares the gospel through sports. And I'd like to welcome those of you who are in the Harrisburg area. Since January 1st, we've been broadcasting in Harrisburg, in Lancaster County, down to Gettysburg, Adams County. And in fact, if you have an antenna, you might be able to pick up this program in State College. So if you have friends in those areas, tell them about today's news and biblical views and what this station, WBPH, here in Allentown is trying to accomplish. My special guest today is Dave Walton. He is the president of the ministry called Push the Rock. Dave, welcome to this program. Well, thank you. Pleasure to be here. And it's so good to have you here and to know that you have a concern about young people. And uh, actually, I wanted to show a graphic about some of the challenges that young people are facing today. So we're just going to look at that graphic, and then you can come right back. We're going to be talking. Look at some of the problems young people face today. Motor vehicle accidents, those that are between the age of 15 and 24, that's how most young people die through motor vehicle accidents. But then there's drugs and alcohol, depression, self-esteem, and body image cutting and self-harm, peer pressure, addiction to video games, social media, violence, bullying, delinquency, sexual immorality and teen pregnancy, suicidal thoughts, rebellion in the home and school, pornography, eating disorders. Wow, the, the list goes on and on. It sure it? does. It's, it's endless, Dave. Well, tell us a little bit. God took you from being in a secular position and brought you into the ministry of Push the Rock. So how did God work in your life to bring that about? Well, that journey started years ago. Uh, I was a sports fanatic and played a lot of sports and then coached a lot and always had a vision that someday I'd get connected to sports ministry. And then in 1998, that dream came true when two of my friends approached me about helping him start this ministry called Push the Rock. It was a basketball-oriented ministry. Mm -hmm. And so I said, sure, I'll give you, give you some help. And then they asked me to serve as the chairman of the board and organize the organization. So for 17 years, I fulfilled the, the role of board chairman. But during that time, I felt God's tug about leaving the corporate wor world. Mm -hmm. I worked at PPL for a lot of years in a variety of jobs. And like what I did, but had this tug of coming to ministry. And then uh, 2015, our organization had been growing. It was clear to me that God was calling me out of corporate world to full-time ministry. And so I left PPL in 2015 and joined the organization full-time as our president. I've known many people where God has done this very thing. 
they have been in the corporate world or they've had a job and they're climbing up the ladder, so to speak. I mean, they've been very successful. And all of a sudden, it's like God just taps them on the shoulder and says, I have a ministry for you. And boy, I can imagine that's challenging because I, I wouldn't think your salary is anywhere near uh, what you were making in the, you know, in the corporate world as what you're getting now. I could be wrong, but I, I think I'm positively correct in saying you're, you're that right. ministries, but th remember this, the retirement benefits are out of this world, Amen. right? Amen. Amen. And we get to spend it eternity in heaven. So Dave, you're married. Tell us quickly about your family. Yes, I'm married for 41 years to, to my wife, Julie. We have three sons with, and three fantastic daughter-in-laws who are now their family. And nine, we've been blessed with nine grandchildren, ages nine to, to one. And uh, the irony, God's irony is that we have six granddaughters. So we had uh, all boys and then ended up with six granddaughters. So yeah. I'm well, learning to be a, a grandfather to girls. Well, you and I have something very much in common. My wife and I actually were going to be celebrating 50 years this year of marriage. But we have uh, four children, two boys and two girls. But we also have nine grandchildren. But ours are the opposite of yours. We have six boys and three girls. So we have something really in common. But Amen. That's great. So Push the Rock, how did you ever come up with the name Push the Rock? Well, we started as a, a basketball-only ministry. So the name has a dual meaning. The Push the Rock is a slang phrase for pushing the ball up the court. And for years, I played basketball in South Jersey and would frequently go into the city of Camden to play. And the phrase push the rock is something I heard for years. Mm -hmm. So push the rock is a basketball term. We kept the name even when we moved from basketball to, to uh, all sports. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, the name push the rock is pushing, promoting the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if you read the Bible, the, the God and Jesus are referred to the rock many times over. Yeah. So our favorite verse, Isaiah 26, 4, trust in the Lord for the Lord is the rock eternal. Amen. And we put our trust in Jesus Christ and focus on him as we use sports to share the gospel. Yes, I, I like that idea, push the rock because of Jesus being the rock. And in uh, Matthew chapter 7, when he talks about the wise man, he built his house upon the rock. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. And of course, when the storms came and the floods came and the winds blew, that house was able to stand because it was founded on the rock. So God has had you on a journey some 21 years. So tell us more about that journey. So we started as a, a camp ministry in the Lehigh Valley. So in 97, we ran one week of camp. 98, we ran two weeks of camp. But we also took a missions trip to Venezuela. And for me, that was a life-changing trip. I got to go on this trip. And when I first went, my thought was, well, what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. But God gave us a vision during that trip to be a sports ministry that impacts the world for Jesus Christ one life at a time. Well, the world's a big place. We were a Lehigh Valley ministry and did primarily just camps. But over a period of time, we grew from camps and began to add other programs, a variety of different programs. And then we began to take missions trips. And those mission trips began, launched us to to put in place ministry in other countries. So between 97 and 2003, we were taking five or six mission trips a year, really setting us up for permanent ministry. By 2010, we had opened up an office in Bucks County, and we opened our first international office in Costa Rica. 2013, we launched Zambia, mm -hmm. and along with a lot of different programs. Between 2013, God's taken us from a small ministry in Emmaus to a, a ministry that has nine locations, ministers to around 25,000 people a year all around the world. And uh, we, we're blessed to be used by him and to use something that God has uh, everyone playing. It's not sports. Yep. Well, we're going to take a break quickly, Dave, but we'll be right back and we'll be talking more about this important subject about reaching young people through sports. So don't go away, we'll be back in one minute. 
Welcome back to the program called Today's News and Biblical Views. I am interviewing Dave Walton. He is the president of a ministry called Push the Rock. He was just explaining that that is a basketball term. And also, push the rock means to push the Lord Jesus. And not that we push him, but that we invite other people to consider him. And the Bible speaks of Christ being the rock of our salvation. So I'm going to go back and ask Dave some more questions. Dave, give us some more insight about the programs uh, that you offer with this ministry called Push the Rock. Sure, thanks. Uh, we still run a number of summer camps. And so summer camps are run in all of what we call districts. So in Lehigh Valley, we run camps, Bucks County, Delaware County, Harrisburg. How, how long do the camps last? Well, most of them are a week long. A week. So, and they are a variety of sports. So it's from basketball to soccer, baseball, flag football. We also do something called an all sports camp where every day you introduce a different sport. So that was the, the flagship program that we ran for a number of years. We also have a homeschool phys ed program. So homeschool parents need a place for their children to get credit for physical education. Mm -hmm. So a number mm -hmm. of years we launched a phys ed program for homeschoolers and we run about six of them. Each session is about six weeks long. So parents sign their kids up for one session or all six. Mm -hmm. And last year we ministered to about 850 children through our homeschool phys ed program. We also have an after school program and that's probably the fastest and uh, most significant program that we run. So there are roughly 10,000 children around the world that come to after school programs. And so we started that in Costa Rica where I have a number of programs today for kids after school in Costa Rica. We have the same thing in Brazil, where there's three to 400 kids. They come every single week to our facility in Brazil, and they play sports, but we also teach them about the gospel and have the hope of the gospel. We have an English session where kids are learning, we're improving their English, and then we do some tutoring. And in Zambia, we have a similar kind of program where kids are coming every day to a facility. We are teaching them English, playing sports, sharing the gospel, and helping them then with their schoolwork. And you know, in the Brazil program, I'm so excited that Danny and Bobby Stefan uh, from Calvary, I mean, they're part of our congregation, but that how God has worked to bring them in to push the rock ministry. Isn't that exciting? Oh, they and they're a great couple. They've been a great fit for yes. us. and. Uh, we had the privilege to have them in our home uh, last May yeah. and uh, gotten very close to them. And yeah. they're doing a fantastic yeah. job. And Brendan O'Brien is on your staff also. Yes. I've known Brendan since he was a, a, a student with my oldest son in, in, at Bethlehem Christian School. Yeah, it's he great. went through the school and then he went on to college. Then he came back as a teacher and then ended up being the principal, the headmaster, whatever. And now he's in your ministry. And in fact, he's in charge of what, Eastern Europe or part of Yeah, we Europe? have ministry in... Uh, what are the countries where you have ministry? Well, so we're in Mexico, Guatemala, Costa Rica, Brazil, Zambia, Italy, and Spain. So Brendan oversees the European operations. So that includes staff in Italy, staff in Madrid, as well as Tenerife, Spain. And then he oversees all of our short-term trips, which we ran about 15 to 16 every every he's, he's year. He's very busy, isn't he? So mission trips are another program that we have. Yes, Brendan's very busy, yeah. as all of our staff are. So, Dave, if I have this correct now, you, so you have a sports camp or you have an after-school program, and you you know work with the kids in sports. I mean, you teach them all the practical things, but there's always an opportunity there where they hear about the Lord Jesus Christ. Absolutely. So in um, our summer camps. There's a devotion every single day. There's a challenge to play for Christ. And then there's a, an invitation to receive the Lord. And then in our after school program, which is in many countries, including the US, every single session has a chapel service. And so we go from the creation story, the fall of man to Jesus paying the penalty and building that bridge for us back to have a relationship with God through 
the work of Jesus. What a wonderful way of reaching young people because sports is so popular, isn't it? Oh, it, it is. I mean, and, and to, to wed the two, sports and the gospel. And there's so many analogies, too, where Paul says, I fought a good fight, I finished my course, I kept the faith. The analogies that he uses often are sports, you know, run the race that you might go for the sure. gold. Absolutely. And, and whatever. So, Dave, you're obviously very excited about this. Are there some things that kind of rise to the top that really pique your excitement for 2019? Well, the after-school program that I referred to is probably an area that I personally am most excited about because we've been given the opportunity to go into public schools. And so we're now running 16 programs, wow. primarily in public schools, using sports. And so you might say, well, why is that? Well, many of the city public schools have reduced their phys ed. And the second thing is that based going back to the problems that you shared early. Yes. You know, role models is something that we provide. And so the principals and teachers like the fact that our staff come in as positive role models. Second, the kids often go home to empty homes and they play video games. They're tempted by the Internet and pornography and social media and, and so on. So we're providing an outlet. We're also teaching in the character. And from our point of view, the opportunity to share the life changing message of Jesus Christ is something you can't put a value on. It is, it's just the, the greatest thing for us to be able to share the message of Jesus Christ. And what excites me is that kids are coming to Christ in these public school programs. And one of the things we have the opportunity to do is to give them a Bible. Great. And kids that come to Christ are asking us to have a Bible. And I'm always fascinated that kids that don't accept Christ still ask to get a Bible. It would seem to me that your role as a president, you, you get the overview. You get to go and visit these different sites and all these different programs. And you see, in other words, some of the staff are involved in just one aspect, but you get to kind of oversee the whole thing. And what about prisons? You go into prisons, too. We do. We do. So we started a prison ministry in Costa Rica, and it started to grow. We saw people being changed for, for the Lord. And then we launched one in Zambia and Brazil, and now we have it here in Pennsylvania. And last year we were in 17 different prisons uh, around the world. And what's always interesting to me is not only we get to share with the prisoners while they're in prison, but many when they get out, some of them get out, we stay connected wherever we can as pen pals and mentors and share what it's like on the outside and help them to reacclimate to society and influence them for the Lord. Amen. Your enthusiasm is, is catchy. I, I'm excited, and I'm sure that the staff just love to hear you talk about what God is doing. We're going to take a break, but we're going to come right back. So we're talking about the subject of Push the Rock. This is a program that you may want to get your children involved in, your grandchildren. And God is working mightily to bring the gospel into a situation where sports are getting the attention of the young people. So we'll be right back. Don't go away. Welcome back to today's news and biblical views. I am interviewing Dave Walton. He is the president of a ministry called Push the Rock. And we're talking about reaching young people, but also they go into prisons to reach adults as well and have a program to kind of come alongside of those prisoners even when they get out and to help them. So this is an exciting subject. Youth are troubled today. There are so many problems. And uh, Dave just mentioned about role models. Are you a good role model for your children, your grandchildren, people in your sphere of influence? We need good, solid role models today. So Dave, tell us a little bit more about the philosophy of Push the Rock. This is a ministry that God has just I'm so excited to see how this is expanding around the world. Yeah, God certainly uh, given He's us great you. opportunities. Yes. And, uh, and it's a, an honor for me to be able to serve the Lord here. So our, our philosophy could be defined up in five values that we, have, we hold dear as an organization. And the first one is that we're firm in our faith. And by that, I mean that we would uncom be uncompromising in, our in any of our values and our doctrine and approach to ministry. 
And, and you know, sometimes that impacts people giving to us because we've been told, well, if you would eliminate the Christian component of your ministry, we'll give you money. But we believe God's called us to use sports to share the gospel, so we're firm in our faith. Second, that we have this philosophy of being individually focused. So if you look at our vision statement, is to impact the world for Jesus Christ, but one life at a time. And every interaction is a moment of truth to share the hope of the gospel. Now, being individual, individual focused drives us to a philosophy of repetitive contact which would mean that we would prefer to have contact with the same kids or same adults over and over and over again. I think that's happening in a lot of ministries. I know with our missions teams, rather than going to different places all the time, we're like we're going back to India, we're going back to Brazil, we're going back to Cameroon, West Africa. So tell us more about that. Well, so it, it plays out in almost everything we do. We have summer camps, but the goal is to get many of those kids in summer camps to come to our after-school program, mm -hmm. where the homeschool kids, we're with them all year, and get yep. them to come to a summer camp. So the, the objective is to be with the same kids over and over again. Yep. So we've limited the mission trips, for instance, yep. to go to the places where we have ministry and we see the same people over. And you, and you build relationships that way. And absolutely. So the third, um, it, Third philosophy or value would be that we'd be innovative, which has its share of problems in that sometimes you end up trying to do too much. But being innovative has led us to launch some unique ministries. We have a, a disc golf ministry called Eagle's Wings that has strongly led to impact professional disc golf players. That's the, disc golf is the fastest growing sport in the U.S. Wow. So that innovative drives us to consider alternative sports and, and approaches. And I'm considering an outdoor ministry. We would do fishing and paddling and, wow. and camping. The fourth is that we're kingdom minded. And by that, I mean that we would focus on partnering with churches and like-minded Christian organizations everywhere we go. The objective at the end is to build God's kingdom. And then last, that we would be family oriented. Now, this has become a significant challenge for us as that we've grown. So our staff was a handful of staff in Emmaus a number of years ago. Now we've got these nine different locations, 16 locations, I should say, in eight different countries. Hard to maintain a family environment. But we're working hard to be family-oriented. In fact, I, have a, I had a Zoom call this morning with a staff member at Zambia just trying to stay connected to him. So those five values really drive the, the philosophy of our ministry. What, what would you say is your greatest challenge? I'm sure you have many challenges, but what are some of the greatest challenges you face right well, now? Well, they would be in, in three areas. One is while we've grown a lot in staff, we could always use more staff, more staff. and more volunteers. Okay. Okay. The second would be in financial resources. So seven or eight years ago, 50% of our income came from fee-based programs. We made a decision as a board that we were going to expand what we did to the underprivileged. That led to after-school programs in the inner city. It led to a prison outreach. The number of percent of fees that we charge or collect is now only 15%. 15%. So 85% of our funding comes from contributions, mm -hmm. something we're just launching is a coffee project. Mm -hmm. So the Costa Rican ministry suggested that we sell coffee. Mm -hmm. So I have a pilot going to see if it yeah. makes sense. We found the roaster that will put our label on the back as an, mm -hmm. a source of income, and we're in the early stages of that. So funding becomes uh, a significant one. The third challenge for us is that we grew from a mom and pop to a small ministry, and we be, are growing to a mid-sized organization, maybe a little quicker than I would have preferred, but God keeps opening the doors. Amen. And Amen. that growth brings its set of challenges from just the way we organize and manage and stay connected and so forth. It's so. exciting. Well, Dave, thank you so much for sharing on this program and may God bless you and may that enthusiasm, and the word literally means God within, may that enthusiasm continue for life and for young people and for 
just for this whole ministry of Push the Rock. God bless you in every way. Well, well, thank you so much. It's been an honor to be here. Amen, amen. Well, isn't that exciting to hear a man that's left the corporate world and now God is using him in ministry, but not just here in the Lehigh Valley, but as he's mentioned in all these different countries around the world. You know, if you pray the prayer of Jabez from 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9 and 10, it says, Oh, that you would bless me. I've had people say, well, I never pray for myself. Well, if you read the Bible, <laughs> the prophets were praying for themselves and the apostles, and you read throughout the scriptures, you'll find Paul always asking people to pray for him and how much he needed prayer. But the prayer of Jabez says, Oh, that you would bless me indeed, and that you would expand my border, and that your hand might be with me, and that you would keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. Pray the prayer of Jabez, that God will use you more. I'm so excited to know that this program is now on in Harrisburg and Gettysburg and many, many different parts of Pennsylvania where it wasn't on before. But God is expanding this ministry. Please pray for us that we'll be humble, pure, and committed. That's so important. When God blesses, the enemy likes to blast. If you don't know Jesus, turn to him and get involved. And maybe you can support this ministry and have children and grandchildren involved in Push the Rock. Thanks for watching today's program.